More than 300 people from an area near the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant can now return to their homes. Japanese government officials have lifted an evacuation order for a neighborhood in the city of Tamura. It's the first time they've declared an evacuation area safe. to live in again. People in, the neighbor, in this neighborhood had to leave their homes right after the accident three years ago, but government officials found that radiation levels were relatively low, so workers could decontaminate the area before other parts of the evacuation zone around the plant. But most evacuees from the area say they don't plan to return home in the near future. Some of them are worried there may still be pockets of high radiation. Hideyuki Tsuboi says his parents will return home, but Tsuboi, his wife, and their three young daughters will stay in temporary housing in another part of Tamura. It's our responsibility as parents to ensure a safe life for our children. That's the main reason we decided not to go back. Government officials plan to give DASA meters to people moving back to the neighborhood more than 80,000 people from the evacuation zone still can't return home. Residents from three more municipalities in the evacuation zone may be next in line to go back. That's as the decontamination work there has been completed. The government is in charge of removing radioactive substances from the evacuation zone around the nuclear plant. The area includes all or parts of 11 cities, towns, and villages, but the cleanup effort doesn't include a zone with high radiation. As we mentioned earlier, officials on Tuesday lifted the evacuation order for the city of Tamura. Environment Minister Nobuteru Ishihara says the government also finished cleanup work in two other towns and a village on schedule. So do you think the Japanese authorities are moving too quickly and trying to move in people to some of the outlying neighborhoods of the Fukushima plants? Absolutely. You know, they're really forcing them to move in because they're taking away the, the money that they have been receiving to live remotely. And the only way they can continue to be on a stipend is to come back into that radiation. So it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. It's uncomfortable to live far away. On the other hand, it's worse to be in a high radiation area. We will continue monitoring radiation levels to confirm that the effect of the decontamination work lasts. We will do our best to rebuild those areas. We will also do all we can to speed up decontamination of other areas to complete the work on time. The deadline for decontaminating six more municipalities has been postponed to three years from now at the latest. But officials don't have a detailed plan to clean up the town of Ftaba, where the plant is located. Most of that community still has high radiation levels. Researchers are making great strides in the field of regenerative medicine. They're learning how to stimulate the body's inbuilt repair mechanisms to heal tissues and organs. Now, doctors in Japan are pioneering a way to create blood vessels and even new bone. Susumu Yuasa is 81. Five years ago, he started to feel a sharp pain in his right ankle. The pain grew stronger by the day, and soon it was hard for him to even walk. The diagnosis was not good. The problem was a blockage in an artery near his groin, impeding the blood flow. My doctor was even talking about where to cut my leg off. I was really shocked. Yuasa's leg was saved thanks to the state-of-the-art research being conducted by Akira Marui, an associate professor at Kyoto University. Marui used this substance, FGF2. It's derived from a protein that occurs naturally in the body. When blood flow is impeded, FGF2 helps stimulate cells that create new blood vessels. It was already known that the protein can help blood capillaries to form. But up to now, 
FGF2 could not be used in treatments because it breaks down as soon as it is injected into the body. Marui's research team found that mixing the FGF2 with a gel prevented it from breaking down so fast. The protein continues to be discharged for about a month, leading to the regeneration of many blood vessels. With this method, blood vessels are created faster and blood flow increases rapidly. It works by strengthening the body's own inherent natural healing ability. Marui used the FGF2 in treating Yuasa, injecting it in more than 40 places on his right leg. Six months later, and the change is remarkable. Yuasa is almost totally pain-free now. And he can walk about two kilometers. I can walk and enjoy myself and even drive my car. I couldn't be happier. The treatment is easy. Any doctor can do it. It has great potential and should be used widely. FGF2 is also being used to treat periodontal disease, a problem affecting nearly 80% of adults in Japan. It's a disease of the gums, which melts the bones that form the base of teeth, causing them to fall out. A few drops of FGF2 solution applied directly to the affected area helps to produce new blood vessels and regenerate the bone. Nine months after his treatment, this patient's bone is almost back to normal and the teeth are no longer loose. Clinical tests found that lost bone can be regenerated to about 60% of its former mass. The figures show that FGF2 is effective in restoring the function of the teeth. I want to work hard to make it available as soon as possible so that dentists can start treating patients this way. Now doctors are looking to the next frontier, other proteins that could regenerate heart muscles and even the nerve cells of the brain. will sway with tradition at a school for hula dancers at a hot spring resort affected by the 2011 earthquake and tsunami disaster. The spa resort Hawaiians in Iwaki City, Fukushima Prefecture is famous for its hula dancing and a popular tourist destination. The resort closed right after the 2011 disaster and reopened about a year later. The teenagers will be the 50th generation of students since the dance school was established in 1965. I'd like to become a dancer who can give people happy memories. Many people are still suffering from the disaster, so I'd like to be a hula girl who can heal their emotional wounds. They will make their debut as hula dancers in July. Five years last Friday since the worst nuclear accident in U.S. history. The incident was rated a 5 on the 7-point international nuclear event scale. On March 20, 28, 1979, one of the reactors at the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant in Delphine County, Pennsylvania, partially melted down. The extent of the accident was only determined a day later, and that's when evacuations began. An unknown amount of radioactive gases were released into the atmosphere, so at this point, injuries and sicknesses attributed to this accident can never actually be proven. Later, though, it was found that a combination of design and operator errors caused a gradual loss of coolant leading to the meltdown. The decommissioning of the plant and restoration of the site is still decades away. 
And how's this for irony? It was on that exact same day, March 28th, but in 2011, that workers at the Fukushima nuclear complex discovered new pools of radioactive water leaking from the site. The leaks are what officials attribute to the soaring levels of radiation spreading to soil and seawater. And our state's attorney general say time is up at Hanford. The state took a major step toward forcing the federal government to meet cleanup deadlines at Hanford and keep the citizens of Washington safe from the hazardous waste there. As King 5 investigator Susanna Frame reports, the governor has initiated a process that could lead to the state and feds battling it out in court. I am totally confident that this is the right thing for the state of Washington to do. And the reason is, is that we have shown extreme patience with the federal government. And with that, the state of Washington started a running clock at Hanford. For nearly five decades, the feds produced plutonium for the Manhattan Project and the arms race at Hanford. Since 1989, the U.S. Department of Energy, which owns the nuclear site, has worked on cleaning up the toxic mess they left behind. Yet the job is riddled with technical problems and decades-long delays. Now the feds have 10 working days to accept new demands from the state of Washington or litigation could be on the way. Now the clock is up. The risk posed by the waste in these aging and in some cases leaking underground tanks continues to grow and further delays are unacceptable to the state of Washington. Here's what state officials are fed up with. For years, the U.S. Department of Energy has missed agreed upon legally binding deadlines on the cleanup project. They've not created required plans for the job and the plans they do have Many they've kept secret from the state. So today the governor and AG issued a demand to the feds to hurry up and shape up. Among the mandates, build more underground tanks. Existing ones are old and falling apart. More accountability. The feds must regularly report progress to a federal judge. And judicial oversight of the cleanup will extend 25 more years, all the way to the year 2047. We intend to hold the federal government to their prior commitments and achieve hamper cleanup in our children's lifetime. If the U.S. government doesn't accept the new demands, they have 40 more days of dispute resolution. If that fails, the state is threatening to haul the feds into federal court. The problem is, is that for decades, the state of Washington has had this obligation imposed on it by the federal government, and it's time for, uh, uh, you know, it's time to, uh, uh, for them to step up to the line and do what they promised us, bottom line. So we have more news out of Hanford today. This one about worker health and safety. Today, six more workers got sick from exposure to unknown toxic vapors, chemical vapors at the site. This has been a serious problem just this month. With today's incident, now 24 employees have gotten sick from inhaling potentially dangerous vapors in just the last two weeks. And some of the affected workers from the sources I've talked to say that they have headaches still, they're shaky, um, having difficulty breathing. So I asked Governor Jansley about that today. I have real concerns about this. Um, we have not had the full definitive brief, brief, uh, briefing on what has happened on this. But obviously, when Washingtonians are having trouble breathing at a work site controlled by the federal government, we're very, very concerned. So the workers exposed today were treated at Hanford's on-site medical clinic. Others in the last two weeks have been transported to the hospital, treated there, but all of them have been released. They're trying to get to the bottom of what the heck is happening there. Usually, something like this would only happen like four or five times a year. So 24 in, so two, in weeks. two weeks. Such a short period. And right. they haven't identified the source of the fumes or what the fumes consist of. Uh, very difficult to find out what the workers have inhaled. And that's yeah. what they want to know. Right. They want to know what's in my body and what's yeah. going to happen long term. Right. Susanna, thank you.